This is brought to you by Cricket 8. They are a new player in the game trying to educate fans on what is really happening in cricket. We have a partnership with them where we host live watch alongs, do podcasts, and write articles. If you want to know what is really happening with our game, visit cricket8.com. If you make any content, Minbo Pro is the tool for you. Take your long format content and cut it and slice it for social media. This AI inspired weapon will turn your one piece of work into so many clips. Try Minvo.pro now. Welcome to the scoreboard and morning everyone. Well, Shubhan Nagil attacking and risking a game that he knew was about to open up because of the spinners was not an ideal situation. Backing away and slogging from the leg stump a couple of times and then missing a straight one with a lazy clip. I mean, what? This is just... Kucharat just did not play smart cricket. It was just not smart cricket for a team that was so massively ahead in the game in so many different ways. I... But before that, let's go back to the start. LSG were sluggish, but I think they read the pitch pretty well. And every one of them tried, every time one of them tried to force the six, they hit the ball straight up in the air. They got some runs and certainly enough to bowl to, but the Gil uh, Sudhash and opening partnership looked to end the game. All they needed was two set batters to handle the spinners, and that was going to be it. Instead, Gill opened up an end. I thought Bishnoi bowled great without luck and then never even needed to bowl his third over. Siddharth bowled three no balls in an over, which is quite the effort for a finger spinner, and still ended up with fantastic uh, figures uh, from the end. But Krunal Pandya picked up more wickets than I think he probably has in entire seasons. And um, we're purposely not mentioning that Kane Winston came in as an impact sub. I mean, he certainly made an impact. You can't um, have a go at that. But then we saw a pinch blocker. Now, Candy, what was all that about? I loved every part of this. There was a leg slip in it as well at this point. It was just off the chain. But luck now, spinners, or Krunal Pandya in particular, just got them so far in front. And then obviously, um, uh, uh, Yash Takor, well, you know, pushed it even further in front with his wickets. He probably ends up with the best figures, but certainly I think Bishnoi and Krunal Pandya played a massive part in this game. And they did all of this without Mayank Yad, uh, Yadav bowling well or finishing because of an injury, which is more of a problem going forward, uh, but certainly not a problem at the moment. And Gujarat stole one game against Mumbai and they have now given back two. Uh, so... I don't know how to feel about them. Whereas Lucknow is at three and one. And I honestly, I can believe that they won this game, but I can't believe they won it so easily in the end. But what about Mumbai? They finally decided to hit a lot of sixes, which makes sense because almost their entire batting lineup is set up for that one particular fact. And they went after Delhi's bowlers. And I'm being friendly using the term bowlers here, if we're really being honest. Does any team need cool deep? I mean, every team would need cool deep, but. Specifically, does any team need an injury to end more than Kuldeep does? And apparently he will play in the next game. But Hardik's batting was probably the thing that helped Delhi bring the game back until Nokia bowled at the end, which I think now his last seven overs at the death have gone for one billion, two trillion, a decad dodecadillion. I don't know if that's a number. But we have to remember that Romario Shepard was absolutely great. This is what he does best. It's that ability to just hit sixes and clump them together in a small pip space of time. Romario Shepard only needs like 15 balls to make a huge difference in a cricket game. And he certainly did that. And in the end, because of Delhi's terrible start where they were trying to hit the ball hard and couldn't actually find any boundaries at all. They never got close, but fair play to Tristan Stubbs who at least played an incredible innings on his own to make the game look slightly closer than what it was. Uh, the other thing that made it closer was the fact that Mumbai can't bowl. It's incredible to have Jasper Boomer in a team and still be in a situation where you're thinking there's really not a lot of bowling here. And let's not beat around the bush here. Mumbai won this game because Romario Shepard did something absolutely extraordinary and Jasper Boomer had great figures yet again. Outside of that, they probably still would have lost this game, which just is mind-blowing considering they were on for 200 pretty much from the second over onwards. But... That's what we have uh, for uh, the intro, but let's get to the main scoreboard part of the show. We've got plenty of stuff here. Um, Sean, I hope you get better. I know you're a little bit ill at the moment, but we, Varun has stepped up and he's just been making graphs all day today like a madman. Um, so this is Gujarat's um, strike rate by phase today. I thought they should have blocked out the last seven balls. And if you're watching the Cricket 8, here we go. Cricket 8 in the corner here. Uh, if you're watching the Cricket 8 live, um, 
uh, watch along, you'll know that I said this on air. I said with seven balls to go, they should have blocked out the rest of that power play because they were so far ahead of the game. What they didn't need to be in a situation was where they were thinking they needed boundaries. They actually, if I remember correctly, they might have even got a boundary at the start of that seventh over from Shubman Gill backing away and slashing. And it was just, it was the stupidest shot. He played two horrendous shots. And I would say the wicket was probably more lazy. But you could see they were chasing 160. They didn't need a boundary in the sixth over. What they really needed was they needed to work out what was going to happen here. And here was my thought process. If they had scored 52 runs in this period, I thought the next four overs, they were odds on to score about one for 24, right? Which would have meant that they would have been about one for 75 coming into that 10, 11 over mark with many wickets in hand, um, many batting options available to them. They could have played with the batting order and did whatever they wanted. Instead, they lost a wicket here, and then they lost a wicket here, and that led to a mini collapse. And it was just a horrendous chase, and they were behind the game. And Bishnoi, they could have kept Bishnoi on, and if they had him, I think they probably might have even won by more. But partly they wanted to get through some overs of seam, and uh, you know it changed a little bit. But just, this is a dreadful chase. They had broken the back of this chase and they completely gave it back for no reason. If they hadn't have lost a wicket at the end here, Gil or um, Sudarshan could have blocked out two overs at a runner ball and then in the ninth over gone absolutely crazy and tried to get a couple of boundaries, put all the pressure back onto them. Instead, in the end, Krudel Pandey is bowling like he's Rangana Harafta, tossing it up. Uh, her, her, just disgusting. I hated it. This is their batters today by strike rates. This is absolutely f fascinating, right? So Sudarshan's ended up with 134. Gill probably felt he was batting too slow, but because of what Sudarshan was doing at the other end and so many no balls and wides and all sorts of other things, they were going absolutely fine. This is the impact sub. This is the new person they brought into the side. I'm not... I, I, and I just want to go back to Kane. I don't think it was a massive error of bringing him in because if they wanted to keep going through the middle at about a run of ball for a couple of overs, that's fine. I don't think ever batting Kane and Sudarshan together is a good idea just because I think both of those players can get stuck. But I don't have an issue with that. The problem is that he got stuck and then got out really early on as well. Sharif didn't work. Shanker, again, I feel like with Kane and Sudarshan and Shankar, they've just got so many guys who can get stuck. And, and that was a bit of a problem. Then they did this random thing of sending Nalkandi out as a pinch blocker. I mean, he has slogged some when batting in the smat coming in early on um, at times, but clearly today that wasn't what he was sent in to do. So the pinch blocker role didn't work. This should have been Rashid Khan. There's no point keeping Rashid Khan to the end. You can do so much damage and it would change the bowling plans of the team if Rashid Khan is out there. That, you should have gone for a disruptor. In, instead, they went the other way. Tawatia, you know, does what he does. He, he mucks around and then started hitting sixes, but they were too far behind. And it, to be fair to him, we saw the same in the first innings. It was not a particularly easy pitch to hit sixes, right? As I said in the intro, you know, uh, uh, Stoinis, K.O. Roll, and there was someone else. Almost every time one of those guys hit a six, it was like next ball they scooped one straight up in the air. These are the LSG bowlers by economy rates today. Remember at one say uh, Takor had a great economy and that's gone up to 7.83, which is still more than acceptable. Siddharth's bowled three no balls in one over and, and bowled in the power play and still went at 7.2 runs and over. Um, uh, Mayank came in, was bowling slow, and we now know he has a side strain, so that's a bit of an issue. Naveen, I still don't think he's bowling well enough, so there's a question mark there. Uh, Bishnoi deserved more than two overs. I thought he bowled absolutely beautiful. No one was picking his wrong. But this is something else, right? This is, this is Krunel in excelsis, right? It's, it's almost as good as you can see him bowl. Um, so absolutely fantastic from that point of view. And this is his economy rate by batters. So you can see that Shanker hit him at five runs. Everyone else is under three runs and over against him. Just an absolute mastery. That is, uh, I love the way he bowled. He bowled differently to different players as well. Uh, really, really good work from him. Um, and this is him versus left hand and right hand. So we could see that um, he's got 19, uh, he's got 19 wickets against the left handers, but his true economy is 
almost, uh, almost three quarters of a run worse than a normal bowler. And he's going at par wickets. So the par wickets is quite interesting. That's probably because everyone's trying to heave him everywhere. And against right-handers, he got 50 wickets. He's going at almost a run and over better um, than a normal bowler would. But he doesn't get wickets. And it, it's just, if you could get him to here, he's such an elite bowler. We know he has periods where he's exceptional and other periods where he's, it doesn't quite work for him. Um, but everyone, anyone who's ever been on any of my stuff will know that I'm such a huge fan of Karunal Pandya because you don't get players with his skill set all that often. Um, and he's absolutely fantastic player. And you can see by year here. So this, this is that period where I just thought he dropped off a little bit. Uh, in 2021, he took six wickets. Um, uh, you know, his economy uh, was not too bad there. So economy, always good. True wickets, um, uh, not as good. So he's had two negative seasons and one average season, but he's only had two wickets that are clearly where he's taken above average wicket expectations on our true wicket metric. And you can see here quite a few that are under and one kind of almost on the button here. So I, I think he gets underestimated as a player. He's probably, I think one, he's one of those guys who's probably a very, very good IPL player and not quite an international player. And I think that those players generally get um, thought of less in IPL cricket, whereas it's kind of the opposite of the way that I look at it, right? Like, you know, you can probably get him so sometimes slightly under market value just because you know he's not going to be an Indian star. All right, let's have a look at LSG's batting today. This was fascinating. He hit a six and then hit one straight up in the air. He hit a six. He was trying to hit a six and hit one straight up in the air. He hit a six and hit one straight up in the air. I can't remember if Bononi did as well. But this is, this is a problem. Devdutt Padikal, um, you know, we've seen players like him and Guy Quad just haven't been able to score all that much. Carroll got, Roll got really stuck today. This is the kind of wicket and the kind of innings that can really cost his team. It didn't cost them today because of Gujarat's idiotic play. But uh, if you, you know, he had to stick in and then cash in at the end with a couple of boundaries and he couldn't do it. But to be fair to him, Stoinis, who is a much better hitter uh, than KL Rolls, uh, also played the anchor role today. So they did read the wicket quite well, and you can see uh, Puran. And I thought Bodoni did really, really well late on. So they were still under par, so let's not give them a pass or anything for how they've, how they've gone today. But I do, I do think it's fair that for KL, Stoinis, and Puran that they did read the conditions quite well. And they realized that, you know, uh, you know with Puran, he wasn't just swinging wildly. He was waiting for the balls to be in his area because of what he'd seen early on. These two, oh, go back. These two clearly knew uh, what they were doing, but this particular innings could have cost them the match if um, Gujarat had just batted like human beings. Uh, this is his true strike rate uh, from 2019 to now. So you can see that, let's see where he's at his best. There isn't a single ball from the moment he comes out where he is plus. Oh, I don't even need to look at that. You can see the zero up here. I'm just being an idiot. So true strike rate, of course, is having a look at what ball you face and what the normal strike rate is all the way through the innings. He is under par all the way through the innings. So even when you see him later on kick on, have a look at this. He's still in that, in that what's that, 30 to 50 ball or 60 ball um, uh, period here. He's still under the strike rate of what you would expect a batter to be. Uh, that just tells you quite a lot about KL Rolls batting and the old Simon Duell thing of you can never catch up. You can catch up on individual innings, but you can't catch up overall in your career. And that's really what we're talking about here. Didn't cost them today, so hey, doesn't matter. Uh, Stoinis today, I thought Stoinis was quite interesting. Stoinis has a 20% dot ball percentage against Rashid Khan. And I thought he batted again really well against Rashid Khan. He didn't look like hitting boundaries against him, but really settled the team and down. Doesn't play left arm wrist spin particularly well. I, I, I thought this was fine today because he went on to score at a strike rate of 130, but, and there aren't many left arm wrist spinners, but it is something that teams will note in future that if you do have one available to you, um, went, went to town against his fellow Australian. And now Candy was the other weaker bowler in that lineup that I thought he went after. But this is quite good too. I thought he played Mohit as good as anyone did other than when Bodoni and Puran came together quite well uh, towards the end, which I thought was quite good. But just having a look at 
uh, Stoinis. We know he's not, oh, there's a typo there in Stoinis. Um, we know he's not quite as good against, um, what's the best way of putting this? We know he's not quite as good against, uh, like he's not quite a fully fledged top level professional batter. You know, he's a bit of an all rounder. He's a good first class player, but not a great first class player, all those sorts of things. So there are weaknesses within his game. The interesting thing for him is, Stoinis is brilliant against right arm bowlers and terrible against left arm bowlers. I'm going to give you a, a thing that I've noticed here before. I've seen Stoinis get a lot of throwdowns, and I, I'm pretty sure I know this for a fact, he gets a lot of throwdowns. I wonder if he just takes too many throwdowns and doesn't face enough left arm bowlers, and that's the problem. Because we just said there, true strike rate against left arm spin is okay, but he's down on true average. Left arm finger spin, he's in the negative in both places. And against left arm pace, he is really, really quite ordinary, right? These are all the right armors. It's a, I've, ne I've never seen a player with this kind of um, uh, pattern before. I'm sure there are others, but I've never seen it. I, I think that's fascinating. Uh, bowlers by economy rates today. Nur Ahmed, I think he could have almost got man of the match if they just batted normally and got over the line. I thought his spell was excellent. Rashid. Uh, I thought Lucknow played him well, but again, he left them massively in front. Umesh taking wickets up front again, always a plus for him. I thought Spencer Johnson bowled uh, quite well at times. Now, Candy took a little bit of tap, and Mohit went for runs. It's probably the worst we've seen Mohit bowl for a while. I think he just got a little bit... It's funny, I've watched him bowl the cutter quite a bit. I think he convinced himself that this was a wicket for the back of the hand slow ball, and it was really Bodoni and Puran who took him down there, because they were just waiting for it. Once you see one guy wait for it, you've got to go back. And for those who don't know, that you know, on, his on-pace ball is probably, what, 135, 140. The back of the hand slow ball is probably around 105, 110, and his cutter's around 120, 125. If you have all three of those available to you, you, you can mix it up more than other players. And I think he just got himself a little bit stuck today. But these things happen. Uh, and this is um, him bowling the death overs in true values by season. So we know what a great year last year was. Um, we could see that he had a bad year in 2018, but didn't bowl very much, so that's fine. 2014, um, you know, going at uh, just below average of runs. I would say that the reason that Mohit Sharma didn't play more is that he wasn't bowled enough at the death and that he, his skill wasn't valued enough because you look at that in 2014, 2015, and 2016, those th and 2017, all of those suggest to me that he's always been a plus death bowler and maybe teams haven't been looking at true numbers enough or whatever, but you would take all of these numbers from your death bowler. I'm not, I'm not worried about him not taking wickets at the death, especially if he's almost half a run over better than anyone else. That's his worst season, right? His worst full, fuller season here. So I'm not worried about that. So far this year, this is excluding today, of course. This will come back a little bit. But again, he's having another plus year. But if he resides around here rather than here, the issue is probably more for India, because India want him to be up here somewhere so that they can pick him for the World Cup. But if he's around here, he's still a great bowler um, in that period. Oh, we're having, you can't, you can't be serious. It can't be happening again. It's Canva just does not like us at the moment. It's got some issues um, with the way we're doing stuff. Uh, Canva can go take one. Remember, if you want to get a comment in, uh, Super Chats are the best way to go. So put one of those in. I'm just going to have a quick break here while I, I refresh my computer and I'll be back in one moment. So you've got plenty of chance to put comments in, likes, subscribe or Super Chat. Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimba to get a two-year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimba. Sorry about that. Um, so we finished that game. So well done to luck now for pulling that out and good you're at. I, I think they're really interesting. I, I talked to Rob Barron on Cricket Aid. He thinks they're not very good. I think obviously with David Miller today, did they probably get over the line there? I think they probably do. So you've got to factor that in a little bit. But the other team was missing Cool Deep as well. Um, and Mayank during the game. So realistically, you're not going to get... Um, 
Wait, no, I've got the teams wrong there, haven't I? Cool Deep was um, missing. Yeah, one team's missing Cool Deep and Miller. And, oh no, Cool Deep's the next game. Oh my God, there's too many games on in one day. Sorry. But Miller, Miller was the big one there. But if you get Mike Gadav in current form injured the way that he is, um, I, you know, they were so far ahead in that game. It's ridiculous to get to that position. But let's have a look at Mumbai. So Mumbai scored at 12.5 runs and over in that power play today. I thought they were absolutely brilliant. You do have to question this. 7.6 and 7.4. They did lose wickets. They didn't lose masses of them. But I... They've scored a lot of runs, but that is because of how well they played at the death. You can't really bank on the fact you're going to score 20 runs and over at the death, even with a lineup that is set up for that. You know, Romario Shepard, Tim David, Hardik Pandya, Tilak Rama, all those players. You still can't rely on that. This isn't ideal, but it was a brilliant start um, and certainly a brilliant end. You can't have any issues uh, with that if you're a Mumbai team. Rohit, I thought, was exceptional. Nishan did his job more than anything. Tilak didn't get started. Hardik did struggle, and Tim David came good um, eventually. But it took, you know, he knocked it around for ten or so balls as well. And then this is, I believe, the third quickest, no, second quickest innings of over thirty runs in the IPL ever. And you know, I, obviously, a big fan of Romario Shepard's hitting, and have been for a while. You know, uh, commentating on some of the games he played against England not that long ago when it, it, he almost felt like the difference between the two teams at times. Absolutely fantastic. And this is Shepard's um, strike rate. So he got a single off the first ball, and I think he got a four off the second one. And then you can see there's a dot and a single, I think, around here as well. And then it was just uh, ridiculous boundary hitting over and over and over again. Completely destroyed Unric Nokia, which there are question marks over. Um, this, Hardik at the end of the game said this is what won them the game. I think I said in the intro it was a combination of that and Bumrah. But, it, you know, this saved Hardik. And, and probably Tim David start because uh, it took them to a whole different level. Um, and brilliant batting from him. Uh, he only faced uh, two bowlers. So against Ishan Sharma, he went two runs a ball. And against Nokia, he went at almost five runs per ball. <laughs> um, absolutely remarkable. And uh, again, you know, and, and that, his ability to score two, three, four sixes in a row is what I like the most about Romario Shepard. I think when everyone was getting excited about Odie and Smith, and I think Odie and Smith's a really talented player and still should be worked on and someone should be bringing him back because you don't get talents uh, like Odie and Smith come along all that often. But I think Romario Shepard is better at clumping sixes together when he's seeing the ball well. Um, but this is a true value for runs in over 17 to 20 since the start of 2022. So the la last couple of years and, and a little bit of change here. You can see you've got up here um, I'm assuming this is probably going to be Andre Russell, Heinrich Klaassen. Uh, Romario Shepard's not massively ahead. His median entry point is the 16 over mark. Um, he's going 20 runs above um, true strike rate, and he's going at an average of seven. I think my bigger issue with him sometimes is he does actually knock the ball around a little bit too much. Um, but these are still plus numbers. You can see there aren't that many guys in this sort of elite cluster. And realistically, anyone over here at the death is fantastic. And to be able to do that at a plus true average as well um, is, you know, is quite handy because you're getting extra runs and you're getting them quicker. So that combination of two. But he, we looked at this partly to see how much he sticks out. So you know that he's not as consistent with this. So who knows how many games he plays for Mumbai this year. He might have already paid for himself. Uh, by winning them that game, especially if he gets them closer to qualifying. This is the bowling attack that needs cool deep, which I got lost on before. Rohit Sharma strike rate today by bowler. You see, didn't really score off Khalil. Went after um, Jai Richardson, and also they brought on Lalit Yadav. I thought Lalit Yadav should have come on again when Tim David came out to the crease, by the way, but didn't. Jai Richardson looked sick to me. Um, we thought he might be injured uh, um, coming in. Either way, that, that was a really, really horrific. Um, he really didn't look good. Bowled a couple of really good balls, but a lot of very bad balls. Uh, Akshar is probably, uh, you know, um, used here to get that wicket. I thought he bowled, a, what, the two dot balls or three dot balls it was to Rohit to trap him. And um, Ishant did okay against Rohit as well. Uh, this is the overall. So this is coming back. So Akshar went at nine runs and over. In this game, that was a plus, especially getting Rohit out. He actually dragged Delhi back into the game the first time. 
Um, but you can see here, like Jai Richardson ended up with 10 and over. They've got three guys above him. You know, Nokia um, having some troubles there um, as well. And then uh, Ishant going for runs. And Lala, that was just that one over. Probably would have had better figures if he'd come back for a second one, although maybe not. But even Khalil and Jai Richardson, they're still hovering around the 10 overs mark. This bowling lineup needs Cool Deep back, and hopefully he's fit. And this is Akshar versus Batters today. So you can see here the two guys that struggled the most were knocking him around at a runner ball. That was after the wickets, of course. Rohit went after him, and Ishan Kishan went after him. Um, and that's, he, he was brought on to get one of those guys out and did. And this is Akshar's true values by batter type. This is more the kind of grouping that Krunal should be looking at that we talked about before. So if we look at him against left-handers, he's a slight negative against left-handers overall, going at uh, 0.2 runs and over less than anyone else would. But he's still getting them out at a decent record. But he's getting a lot of wickets with right-handers. So he's got uh, 84 wickets here. He's one run and over better. But he's instead of being down um, in the other area where Kroonel was, he's right level. I like that. He gets left-handers and right-handers out at the same rate. He holds his own well enough against left-handers. And he's brilliant at uh, a run and over better against right-handers. That's a really, really good record against the split. And for a left-arm finger spinner, these things really, really matter. Uh, because of the, the way, uh, you know, because otherwise you're unbowlable at a certain point. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment. Remember, comments, likes, subscribes, super chats, I don't know, or just run out of the room and tell your brother about us. Thanks to the kind folks at FlexiSpot for looking after my office and my butt by sending me their E7 Pro desk that save your favorite desk heights at a touch of a button. You don't have to crank anything. This thing just finds the height that you like and you can work. And their BS12 Pro Chair that supports my posterior while I'm recording, well, this ad and all my shows. If you need great desks, especially ones that change heights or the best quality chairs, head on over to FlexiSpot today. All right, this is Delhi's batters uh, today. So this is really where they lost the game. And to be fair, both of these guys were trying to hit boundaries and it just didn't work. Sure, could have gone out a million times early on. And Warner was absolutely all over the shot. But once they, these two guys got behind, Shaw picked it up a little bit, but they, would, they just couldn't get back. Um, uh, Perel came in um, and got a little bit stuck. And you see, Rishabh came in and played some of the most bizarre shots early on, and then Akshar. So essentially, they tried to chase this with, let's say, two players. Um, this was a fantastic innings from Stubbs. I haven't been the biggest fan of Stubbs. I think there's a lot of guys like Stubbs and... Finn Allen and Fraser McGurk that get promoted a little bit before they're ready and their games aren't round enough. Um, Tom Banton was another one into some of these leagues. I want to see people like Stubbs in two or three leagues before I you know, get them uh, into my starting position. But maybe he's starting to get into that, uh, that area now where he is of that level. It was fantastic hitting. Uh, strike rates by match. So obviously I struggled a little bit there against the Royals, went at two runs a ball. Um, and so the last three games now, um, I, I made a duck against um, CSGO. The last three games now, he's certainly done his strike rate um, a lot of, of use. And, and, but I really do think this was a fantastic game. He gave them a chance of winning, miraculously, considering how everyone else batted. And this is the Mumbai bowlers' economy rates today. So... This was fantastic and was absolutely brilliant. And if you're listening on the live watch along, uh, I said that he came on to bowl his second over and I um, instantly sold my position uh, and, and entered the, uh, exited the betting market because I figured he wasn't going to go for any runs and was probably going to get a wicket. And of course, he did that straight away. Uh, he's going to take a lot of wickets. I thought he bowled well today, but that was partly because they let him bowl well. Um, he got away with his first few overs and then didn't. I'm not completely set on him. The problem with Shepard is that essentially, if you have him and Tim David in the same side, you're only gonna get two overs out of them and they're all gonna be Shepherds, and there's no good spot for him to bowl. He can get you, I think if you bowl him around the nine to 11 over mark, um, you can get maybe one over out of him, but generally he's gonna go for runs. And then Piers Chawla, this is what I asked. I asked, Critic and Naidu was on the, on the uh, Cricket 8 today and I said, this is obviously their best bowler, and this is their second best bowler. Who's their third best bowler? They've already gone through two left arm um, spinners, uh, sorry, two left arm quicks as well. Uh, Nubby 
is fine, but he's really more of a match-up bowler um, and a positional bowler. Probably not going to get four overs out of him. It, but is he their third best bowler? It really doesn't look good when you start to uh, dig down a little bit deep here. And this is um, uh, this is Boomer's economy rate uh, by ball today. Absolutely love this. So I got, actually got hit um, uh, for uh, um, uh, some runs. Uh, hit, well, actually, that's probably a single. Isn't it? No. What would that be? That was his third ball. Did he hit for, hit for a three? Was it, there was a three today. Maybe it was for him. But you can see here, just this period here, his ability is not to go for any runs. And then he comes back on at the end um, and just does really, really well. He's, he's um, you know, not breaking any um, <laughs> anything here. That He's absolutely fantastic. This is his true economy rate by ball. Uh, so you can see here that he doesn't go for any runs in the power play. That middle section is slightly different. And then for the death, he actually still get it's still his worst actual position, which is what I've said from the start, that he's thought of as this fantastic death bowler. I actually think he's better throughout the rest of the innings. The thing is that he's still almost, um, you know, a, a run and over better than anyone else at the death as well. So... He's better all the way through the innings than anywhere else, but I actually think you get more impact from him at the start. If This is why if the Joffre Archer thing had worked, that would have been fantastic. You give Joffre one over early on, um, and then uh, and then you get Joffre to bowl at the death, and you get Boomer to bowl in the middle, and oh, every, every now and again, you're just going to have to go up against one of them. Uh, I wanted to show here just to prove, prove our point a little bit more as well just how fantastic uh, he is overall. So when he bowls in this period uh, from overs 7 to 11, uh, he's taken uh, nine wickets. And you can see he's a slight plus in true wickets and also half an, a run um, better. This is his worst, worst actual period. This is him in the power play. So he's getting just under um, standard amount of wickets, but going at a run and a half per over better um, than everyone else. And think about that. That makes a bigger difference in the power play because there aren't as many runs scored as other parts of the game. This is when I think he's at his best. And I've been saying it for a very, very long time. I think both of these, he's more likely to get wickets. So he gives you more damage. Um, but you can see here, his true wickets are quite extraordinary here. And he's still a run and a half better than everyone else. And then down here, he doesn't get as many wickets in the death as other players, which is one of the reasons I like to use him early on, because he can get wickets. Um, and it, if you use him early on, you can set up the game so you, you're ahead of the game a little bit. This is the only period that you would say he's average, right? And he's still above average, but average um, by his own standards. And we just wanted to talk about this as well. This is uh, the, the um, uh, how teams score off you. So he is 77 a percent less likely to have a six hit off him than another bowler, right? And this is true strike, uh, true strike rates going, or true economy rates for him. Um, he's also then 16 percent. A lot of less people complain that I'm not a former cricketer, and so that I don't really know the game. Well, you know what they can't claim that I don't know desks. I've been using desks for years. I'm a collector of desks, old and new, and I'm sitting on a new one right now. I'm the Don Bradman of sitting at desks. So when I tell you that the E7 Pro next generation height adjustable desk from FlexiSpot is legit. This is like Michael Jordan talking to you about sneakers. This desk holds 160 kilograms. It is as stable as anything I've ever seen and it has under desk cable management. But really the main skill here is that this desk rises and falls at the push of a button and it moves super quick. And it has so many settings that remember your favorite heights. It really does it all. And I could not recommend the E7 Pro from FlexiSpot anymore. Even though I am currently sitting on one of FlexiSpot's BS12 Pro multifunctional adjustable upgraded fabric ergonomic chairs. My butt and computer have never been happier than when using one of FlexiSpot's products. So get over to their page right now for big savings. Bonus ad by, from FlexiSpot there. Sorry about this. The, the screen went black. I don't know why. I could see it. So you should have been able to see it. Uh, so just to go back, you can see here, he's 77% less likely to have a, um, a six against him. Uh, and what's that? 16% less likely to have a four. Uh, he gets 13% more dot balls um, uh, than other bowlers. So the ones is interesting. People do score ones off him. But I think this is the most interesting thing. 
smart batters do try and chip him around and get two. So he gets 11% more twos and threes than other bowlers. And I think that's just because what else are you going to do against him, right? Anyway, that is it for the scoreboard part of the show. Let's get to your questions. I can see there's already a bunch. Um, oh, I say that. There's one here from Path, and Muku's missed it, so I can't even see it. Um, so uh, if Muku could bring that one up uh, and help me out. Uh, I found it. Here it is. Uh, Pass says, what is Rahane doing that other ankles or players of his kind, like Kohli, Kao, Rutu, and Gil, are not? What are legitimate reasons to get 15 or 15 in the middle overs? I think Rahane has been slower this year as well. It's about intent, right? These players can do that path. There's, there's nothing to stop them. We know that Kao Raul and Virat Kohli can score at two runs a ball towards the end of the game, right? By the time they get to the 7th to 11th over, they are set. I think it is a crime, unless, unless the game situation dictates it, but I think it is a crime for your opener to have a strike rate of 160 in the power play and for the next four overs to have a strike rate of 120 or less, even 140 or less. You're set. So if you, if you just chip it around at the moment, you might as well just get a new batter to come in. They could chip it around. I don't understand why players keep doing this. So I do think a lot of it is about intent and everything else. And I'm not a fan. It's not for me, if we're being honest. All right. Uh, thank you for your super chat, Path. Uh, we'll have a quick break. Anyone else wants a super chat, uh, please feel free to get them in. But I'll just go through and see if there's anything else in the chat. You're watching the scoreboard. I'm Jared Kimber. Like this video. Chuck us a like. Slam us a like. Like, like. NordVPN know nothing about knuckleballs, but they can help you with online safety. If you need a VPN, use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber to get a huge discount and four months for free. They also have a 30 day money back guarantee, which is risk free. The link is in the show notes. So stop thinking about knuckleballs for two minutes and go to nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber and get your deal. A few years ago, I tried to work out what my process was for actually making content on sport. And along the way, I realized that I had basically created an online course. So here it is, Fans with Laptops, a course you can do in your own time and it looks at writing, podcasting, and making videos, not to mention social media and so many other parts of the industry. I will teach you about what to do inside the press box or writing a huge feature. But the important thing is that it takes your passion and lets you make something out of it. So if this sounds good to you, try fans with laptops. All right, welcome back. And let's get the box box. He says, if one of your new ball bowlers bowls the ball ball and the other one bowls out swingers, which one should get the first over? Uh, you would give the first over to the swing bowler uh, because the lacquer is going to come off and the seam should last a couple of overs uh, more. So I would always do it in that order. Rahul says, there was so much said about the future of ODIs when there wasn't any close games in the World Cup, but the narrative is completely different when there are hardly any close games in the IPL. Um, I don't remember the narrative ever being that there wasn't any close games in the World Cup and that was the problem with the future of ODIs. The problem with the future of ODIs is bilateral ODIs don't make any money and they're not particularly well watched and they cost a lot to host and you can't have them on night after night after night after night. Um, that's the problem with ODI cricket. It's, there's no, you know, I, and I'm not saying people didn't say that role, but I didn't see that. So I can't really argue uh, the point against something that I don't agree with in the first place. Abdullah says, why is the wall ball not used as much in limited overs cricket? It actually was massively, and you can see there was a huge dip around the world when Kookaburra fixed their seam. They reinforced the seam a little bit, and uh, there was a huge um, drop in the average 20, 21, 2021, 20, 22, maybe, for a couple of years. And then, like they have in red ball cricket, players worked out how to handle it. But the difference is that white balls just don't stay together. The, the, when you dye the ball, everything about it is stronger. And when you paint the ball, which is what we have to do for white, because white won't dye, um, uh, you, know, you get yourself into a situation there where... Um, uh, it, it just doesn't last as long. So that's essentially why you don't see it. But you do see the wobble ball being bowled. The reason that it isn't working as well this year and probably last year as well, uh, not just in the IPL, but around the world, is the batters are using the crease more and the wobble ball doesn't handle uh, use of the crease as much as, as other um, deliveries do. So, you know, that ability to um, uh, uh, put the bowlers off. What, what, one of the big strengths of the wobble, sport, wobble ball is the ability to hit the same length over and over again. If the batter can start to do um, handle that, then obviously it's not as much of a strength. Darshan says, why would MI not play Nuan, Tushara? Uh, 
They seem to lack wicket takers in the power play. I'm not sure he's a wicket taker in the power play, by the way. Uh, but your general point is fine. I've just said, I don't know who their third best bowler is. I would be shocked if he would not instantly come in and be their third best bowler in the way that Spencer Johnson is a plus bowler, even if we're not sure how he's going to go in the IPL. We would trust Spencer Johnson or Thushara more than we would the options that are currently in the side. So I do think um, they should make a change there. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I don't understand why we've gone this long without having uh, And Shubham says, and with the Super Chat, thank you very much. And I've finished with all the chat questions, so I will only um, pick up any Super Chats, and there probably won't be one because this is late now. Um, Shubham says, why is Hardik trying to be an anchor? Just stupid. I don't know. I don't understand why naturally aggressive batters would go to a role that you can find other players for. I don't understand it. He got away with it today, which is fine. Um, I have no problem with him playing slightly within himself. I don't need him to always be at a strike rate of 150 or 160, but I don't understand getting to a point where you are an anchor when we can find other players to play that role. It really does seem that players and we've seen it with Rishabh Pant, we've seen it with KL Roll, uh, we've seen it with countless Australian players in the past too of it's just like cricket just overemphasizes how important anchors are. Hardik Pandya can average 28 with a strike rate of 155. That is what I want him to do. Good luck uh, going up against a team that has that guy in it. A guy who makes 33 off 32 and maybe can hit some sixes for you later on I don't see the point of it. I don't think it's a good tactic and I don't think teams should do it. Um, I am very much against that in every single way. Uh, but that's the end of the scoreboard today. We'll have the power list tomorrow, which will be up on the main site. So run over to that and have a look. Um, but we've got some good videos this week. We've got one on Heinrich Klaas and we've got, I've got one on Raidu as well, um, hopefully coming up in the next few days as well. Uh, more Cricket 8 watch-alongs next week. A huge shout out to them. And if you don't have a VPN, why would you not just go and use Nord? Nord are great. You should go with Nord. Nord. Good Areas is our other YouTube channel. And twice a week, it covers the great cricket stories from today and from 200 years ago. Like how a late 1800s blogger decided which games were tests and that actually stuck. Also why Ishan Sharma was one of the biggest comebacks we'd ever seen in our sport and whether captaincy affects batting. For all of this and more, go to Good Areas twice a week. In cricket, we protected our groin a full century before we looked after our brain. So don't be like our sport. If you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber to get a huge discount on your Nord VPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free as well with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Cricket wouldn't be the same without protection and neither is your computer. Use Nord VPN today.